Well, the heat was on Prime Minister Stephen Harper today to pull off some big moves in a cabinet shuffle. There were major changes. Three ministers lost their portfolios. Eight backbenchers were given cabinet positions. But in many of the key cabinet posts, finance, foreign affairs and natural resources, the names haven't changed. Our Ottawa Bureau Chief Jacques Bourbeau has more on who moves where and whether it's enough to boost Conservative support. After a tough spring, Prime Minister Stephen Harper today revamped the political team around him, bringing in eight new faces, including four women. I think this is a good mixture of uh, some young and uh, promising talent we have in our caucus and some experienced hands. But Harper was careful to keep his economic team intact. Jim Flaherty remains at Finance, Tony Clement at Treasury Board, Ed Fast still the Trade Minister. And Harper has shifted two of his top ministers into economic portfolios. James Moore heads to industry, Jason Kenney now the Employment Minister. I, Shelley Glover. But Harper has swear. made room for newcomers. Hey, Shelley Glover is the new Heritage Minister. Chris Alexander takes over at Immigration. While Pierre Poilievre, one of the Tories' scrappiest, most partisan MPs, is the new Democratic Reform Minister. In describing the shuffle, Harper speaks about change and renewal. But what about the PM what himself? Will we be seeing any kinds of changes in the way you approach politics in the last half of your mandate? I think on balance the government has been uh, successful but obviously we're uh, always looking at ways we can continue to evolve to address new challenges and to improve our performance. Harper didn't address whether his performance needs to change and that says the opposition is the problem with this shuffle. The MPs he's promoted to the cabinet are those that uh, relentlessly mouth the lame talking points, took the nasty uh, personal attacks uh, for the Prime Minister. Uh, these are the people that the Prime Minister rewards. The Conservatives are stressing a new, younger generation is taking its place at the Cabinet table. But Peter McKay went off message with this senior moment. They made the print too small. <laughs> McKay is no longer Defence Minister, moving to Justice, switching jobs with Rob Nicholson. The environment portfolio, which has been a Conservative weak point, goes to Leona Aglukak, who has not been a strong parliamentary performer. Now he's got a new cabinet, but what about new policies? Harper promises that will come with a throne speech this fall. Jean Perbeau, Global News, Ottawa. And our chief political correspondent, Tom Clark, joins us now from Ottawa with more on today's shuffle. And Tom, can you connect the dots here for us? What does this really mean? I mean, it looks like the old guard staying put here. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, what the Prime Minister did, Gord, was remove the risk out of this. If you look at it this way, there are five people who are the keepers of the Conservative brand, five people who essentially run the country. We've got John Baird, John, uh, Jim Flaherty, uh, Tony Clement, uh, Jason Kenney, and of course, Stephen Harper himself. That's the core group. They run the country. They protect the brand. They're still in charge. Their power is undiminished today from what it was a day ago. I think that the... the the advance here, so that's what didn't happen. They, they didn't change. What did happen was bringing in eight new members, half of them women, as Jacques said, uh, all of them under the age of 50, a couple in their early 30s. Uh, but this was aimed really at just one thing, one person, and that is Justin Trudeau. The Liberal leader is settling into a comfortable, solid lead in the polls, and it's really for three reasons. You, because he projects youth, modernity, and a certain amount of compassion. Three things that don't necessarily come to mind when you think of the Harper government. Whether that is important or not is debatable, but it is a political problem. So fight youth with youth. And at least for right now, the, uh, the eight new ones and the young ones, who all have the capacity to have a real impact, nevertheless, at this point, their value to the government is more optical than it is substantive. Well, so, Tom, what do you think? How does this shift, or is it going to change anything for uh, the average Canadian out there? Well, you know, we won't, we won't know for a while. Uh, it probably won't change a lot of the tone. Uh, the Prime Minister's office last week, for instance, sent out a, an email to all ministers to say prepare transition mm -hmm. documents and those transition documents sort of detailed who are the people to talk to, who are the people not to talk to. So that sort of knowledge, if you want, is being passed along, friends lists and enemies lists. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't really know, we, while we have a group of ministers who are now ready to carry the message, we don't know what the message is yet. Uh, we have to wait for the speech from 
the throne, which may be in late fall, as it turns out. And uh, only then will we have a sense of what the next two years hold and what the government really wants to do with the rest of its mandate. So we'll have to figure out what the message is coming up. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Tom.